One of the worst patch notes for Overwatch just dropped, so let's go over all of them. First off with tanks, D.Va. Fusion cannon movement speed penalty reduced from 40 to 30%, and micro missiles projectile speed increased from 40 to 50. So both two pretty fair buffs, movement speed penalty being reduced will let her stay on targets better once he dives onto them, and the micro missile projectile speed increase will make them a bit easier for her to hit. So just two decent buffs to the character. Doomfist is finally seeing some nerfs. Rocket Punch is having the stun duration decreased. So the minimum wall stun duration decreased from 0.25 to 0.15 seconds. And the maximum wall stun duration is being decreased from 0.75 to 0.6 seconds. So yeah, this is going to make it a bit harder for Doomfist to confirm kills off of a rocket punch, because whoever he punches into a wall will have a bit more time to react and try and fight back. They aren't just going to be stunned for enough time for Doomfist to just kill them for free without them being able to fight back. Honestly, could be one of the bigger nerfs of the bats just because of how reliant Doomfist is on rocket punch stun to get kills very easily but who knows. Next up, Winton receiving the most minor buff of all time. His right click now has 10 more meters of range. Incredible. Sniper monkey buffs, I guess, but like, why? For DPS, we have Bastion. Assault configuration cooldown is being increased from 10 seconds to 12 seconds, and the weapon spread will be increased by 10%. This I feel like is fair because it opens up more of an opportunity to go into the Bastion's team whenever he doesn't have assault configuration up. Usually that was the go-to plan was wait for Bastion to use form, then you just hide until it runs out, and then after he uses it, then you're able to go and make a play while he's stuck in recon form. And this will make that more forgiving with the extra two seconds of time that you have to work with before he gets the cooldown back. And the weapon spread increased will just kind of decrease his damage output in assault configuration, especially at long ranges because he kind of had way too much range with it before. Still at close range against tanks especially, it's still gonna deal full damage so it's not like it's too much of a nerf, but will definitely make it harder for him to just snipe DPS heroes from across the map, basically like he was able to do before pretty efficiently. Next up for nerfs, Cassidy, Magnetic Grenade seeing its cooldown increased from 10 seconds to 12 seconds. Why? Why you gotta do this to him? He was already one of the worst performing DPS in the game. I don't know why they're just nerfing him again. Like, it just seems unethical at this point. He needs some help. <laughs> Next up, we have Mei, who's doing very well since they reverted the rework that they did that actually made her horrible. So they are nerfing her. The slow effect on her endothermic blaster is being decreased from 40% to 30%. And I think that's good. Probably one of the only good changes from this patch because it doesn't hurt her damage output. Her damage output was why she was so bad when they reworked her because they just neutered her damage output. And again, removing slows or at least lessening their impact I think is very healthy for the game. It's still not by much, she'll so still have it, so she will still be able to, you know, catch up to heroes as he hits with her primary and slow them down a bit, can catch up to faster heroes. Again, I just think it's a very fair change. Sombra, EMP ultimate cost being decreased by 10%. Okay. Symmetra probably the biggest nerf. Symmetra's base sealed health is being reduced from 125 to 100. So now Symmetra is going to have 200 health instead of 225, which is a pretty major change because going from 200 health to 225 health is a pretty big breakpoint against a lot of things in Overwatch. So losing that 25 health will actually make Symmetra much weaker in a lot of matchups. And I think that she actually needed that extra 25 health because of how her primary had to ramp up in damage over time in order to, you know, deal a reasonable amount of damage for a DPS hero. So her having more health really helped with that playstyle whenever you did have to fight in close range. But now that she's losing that, it's just, I think she's just going to be, you know, right click orb spammer from the back line at all times now. I don't think she'll be able to play as aggressively with teleporters as she could before because, you know, now a lot of stuff will kill her that wouldn't previously kill her. Then next up, Widowmaker also receiving some of the most pointless changes of all time. First up, her ultimate infrared sight is seeing the ultimate cost reduced by 10%. I guess that's actually, you know, actually a buff for her. Next up for Widow's Kiss, the unscoped sots to reach maximum spread increased from 3 to 7. And in the developer notes, they say this is because Widowmaker is at a severe disadvantage against Sombra, so these changes will add more counterplay. 
I don't think an additional four bullets before you reach probably the worst spread in the entire game is going to help that much. You just need to fix her spread and not make it, you know, the size of a small galaxy. Next up for the support changes, we have Ana's Biotic Grenade seeing the cooldown increased from 10 to 12 seconds. And I think that this is good. Fuck Ana. Next up, Baptiste seeing some nerfs to Immortality Field. The health is being decreased from 150 to 125 and the cooldown is being increased from 23 to 25. Again, a change that people wanted because they were annoyed by Immortality Field, but they kind of have to completely rework the ability from scratch if they wanted to make it something that people would have fun playing against because it's not like this is going to do anything people are still going to be annoyed because it's still going to be there the cooldown never really mattered because it was on such a long cooldown and baptiste just wants to play defensively and only use it when he has to and the health doesn't even matter because people are still going to have to divert their attention to the immortality field and break it and they're going to be like oh my god i gotta break it and then i gotta suit the baptiste and like it's not going to do anything like sir they can nerf it and then be like oh my god it's nerfed but it, you're still going to have to play against it it's still an ability in the game it's going to do something and not just do absolutely nothing next up iliati actually receiving nerfs and i think are pretty fair the primary fire projectile size reduced from 0.1 to 0.05 meters on her primary will basically just make it harder to hit which i mean sir i guess very cool now people can't complain that it's free but they're still going to die to it next up changes to healing pylon the base health is being reduced from 75 to 50 so now it has only 100 health and the cooldown when it's destroyed is increased from 12 seconds to 15 seconds. And again, the health I think is pretty minor. Healing Pylon is kind of just strong because it doesn't need to have line of sight to the enemy team to, you know, have value like the other turrets that are in the game like Torbjorn and Symmetra's do. The big strength is you can just hide it behind a wall or some other very hard to reach location and it'll just stay there providing value to your team until someone on the enemy team is inevitably able to get over and destroy it and it's still going to stay that way now the cooldown is a bit more important though it just opens up more counterplay to once you destroy the pylons you can't just have it up as fast so that's kind of fair i guess iliari is a character that definitely needed to be nerfed heavily next up kuriko basically going to be dead protection suzu is seeing the cooldown increased from 14 to 15 seconds this is what i like to call a ceremonial nerf uh, Kuriko doesn't need to be nerfed, she's one of the worst performing supports in the entire game right now, but just because people are complaining, they're like, fuck it, one extra second on Suzu cooldown. There, now now we can say we nerfed her. You can't say we didn't nerf her. So yeah, just just one one more second on Suzu, I guess. Next, we have Life Weaver with the absolute worst changes I've seen in patch notes in a very long time and the worst dev reason given for them. The dev comment is Life Weaver's total healing over a match is significantly higher than any other support hero. So to help bring it more in line, we're making some adjustments to his primary healing blossom. You know... Maybe if you made a functional character that could do more than just spam healing the entire game, he would have less healing. Life Weaver's healing output is very, very low for a support character. Not taking the new healing amount into account, his previous healing per second was 57.7. Ana's healing per second was 93.75. The reason that Life Weaver has such high healing output is because of the way you made the character, he has to charge up a heal to use them. And because of that, he's forced to constantly be charging up a heal at all times and can never deal damage to help out his team because his healing output is just more important. That is the problem you're going to have to address. Because if you were to do that, then he would just naturally have lower healing because he'd actually be doing something else with his time other than charging up a heal to throw at an ally. So please, for the love of God, actually take a look into Life Weaver. Oh yeah, also Life Grip is seeing the cooldown increased from 16 to 19 seconds. And also I think I didn't even mention the healing blossom changes. Uh, the ammo is being reduced from 20 to 16, basically means nothing. And the max healing is reduced from 75 to 70. So yippee, Life Weaver time. He's playable for like two seconds and then they're already hitting him with pretty heavy nerfs. But do you want to know who didn't get nerfed? Zenyatta. Base health increased from 50 to 75. Zenyatta has 225 health now. He's going to be pretty good. Maybe not in the state with current Sombra being in the game with so much damage. But maybe he would be. I don't know. I just have to see what it's like. 
they gave him 225 health before and he was pretty damn broken, but 220 health Zenyatta, pretty damn good. Harmony Orb getting a massive buff. The time to wear off when not in line of sight increased from 3 to 5 seconds. This is pretty massive, especially for playing with, you know, any flankers or mobile heroes like Echo, Farah, Tracer, Genji, any of those heroes. I guess even Sombra, I don't know exactly how the visuals for Harmony Orb interact with her stealth, if they would just ruin her ability to stay hidden and reveal her or not. I don't know. But the extra two seconds is kind of massive because this resets whenever you make line of sight with the hero that has the orb at all. So an extra five seconds of leeway and all that they have to do is make line of sight for one second once to, in order to reset that timer. It's going to be pretty easy to just keep your harmony orb onto a flanking DPS and have it basically function as a mini mercy pocket helping them win duels because they're just getting constantly healed so that they have more total health to work with in a quote 1v1 scenario because it's not really a 1v1 because one is getting pocket healing from orb but yeah it just makes the ability much stronger then orb of discord tanks are celebrating because they think it's a nerf and it is but what this nerf means is that you will now only leave discord on tanks at all moments at every time you can in the mats because discord can no longer be reapplied to the same target for seven seconds after the effect has been removed okay so now instead of moving discord around to targets as i'm suiting them and with target priority i'm now just gonna leave it on the tank 24 7. what are they going to do about it you're gonna you're gonna fall back and hide behind cover okay then you come out and then after five seconds i discord you again what the fuck are you gonna do then oh you want kiriko to cleanse you well kiriko already was the lowest win rate support in the game and they just nerfed suzu oh yeah and also have fun playing around it because I have more reins on it now. A while ago when they nerfed Discord from 40 meters of reins to 30 meters of reins, it was actually a pretty substantial nerf because a lot of the time, Zenyatta wants to play safe and play very far back. So losing that 10 meters actually meant that in a lot of cases, you couldn't Discord someone on the enemy team when the fight first starts. You'd have to wait for them to get a bit closer. And at that point, if you're playing against a tank like a Reinhardt or a Winston or something, they're probably going to have, you know, a barrier that's going to stop you from applying Discord onto them. But now I can just chuck Discord on them and then leave it there. And there's nothing that they can do about it. Unless they want to leave the fight completely and hide behind a wall. Which in that case, sir, throw the fight. Then, after 5 seconds when you re-emerge, I will Discord you again. Discord is now a tank exclusive ability. You will only ever use this ability on the tank. And then whenever you're not able to use it on the tank, you just chuck it on another hero, and then as soon as you can put it back on the tank, you put it back on the tank. Fuck tanks, Overwatch 2, Zenyatta edition. They've nerfed all the other supports. I'm gonna insta-lock Zenyatta and just fuck them up. Have a nice day, please like and subscribe. Oh yeah, and also happy Halloween.